Hello and welcome back to the Broken Mercedes channel. Well, after last week's efforts when Andy came down and we spent many hours stripping things apart, we've kind of come to the conclusion that it's either going to be the fuel accumulator slash regulator, which is behind that rear wheel nearest to us, um, but that's very expensive and means checking the car up to get off and it's wet and cold and normal, I don't feel like it. Or actually more likely, it's going to be the cold start unit, which is like a little control thing under the bonnet. And because that's easier to get to, and it's been raining and it's damp on the floor, and I can't be bothered to get underneath the car, I'm gonna have a look at that one first of all and see what we can see. As an aside, after I mentioned it was getting damp inside a couple of videos ago, some mentioned using cat litter was a really good solution for absorbing damp in cars. I've never even thought of that. And it's only £1.50 for a big bag of it, turns out, in the local supermarket. So have a look at this. Big tray of kitty litter down there. And the car, you'll notice, is pretty much damp free. Now this little box of delights here is the warm-up regulator, which is the thing that's probably causing me trouble. So it's got a fuel line in there, a fuel line in there, and an electrical connection just there. And I'm not quite sure how it actually detaches from the body. Ah, there's two like, Torx type screws there, one either side. So I think it's just two Torxes, two fuel lines, and then uh, that, that's not connected to it. That just goes over it. That looks like it's part of it, but it's not. Right, I'm starting with trying to undo the main screws because they'll be, I figure, the hardest thing to do. Oh, God. And I was right. This flexy thing to try and get into to that little gap is doing, oh, doing nothing. What was that that just fell off? I've still got the tw Torx head. So what just landed on the floor? Oh, part of the uh, flexy thing fell on the floor. I don't know what that thing was meant to do, but it didn't do it anymore. So let's just quickly undo this electrical contact so I can figure out where the little pin wire thing goes. I can't really see it even. There we go, that seems to be releasing. Right, okay, that's one thing removed. Here we go, one free. I'm gonna switch this out for a, uh... oh, come on. I've got to undo this thing to get to the bolt, that's really annoying. Oh, bad words, very bad words indeed. I can't even see where that's gone again. That was a 10 millimeter, obviously. And what else is gonna disappear into an engine in that manner? Damn it. So this is just a bracket that supports the air filter. It's nothing particularly exciting, but it is in the way of what I need to get to. Right, so back with a 14 millimeter spanner. Oh, that one's a bit tighter. Oh, that one's a bit petrolier in every way. So let's follow this pipe back. This one goes curves here, big pipe here down to a small pipe there. Okay, this one feeds from that top one there. Okay, so that one, which I did say when we were rebuilding it with Andy the other day, I said, I think the top one is the cold start feed. I was right, it is. In a five mil socket, keeps making a break for freedom because that just kind of falls off. So at least if it did fall, I might be able to follow it to where the 10 mil um, socket went. Oh, 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 here come, there we go. Just trying to drop anything into the engine bay. Whoops. Oh, okay, so that doesn't have any kind of connection on the back of it at all. That's just a blanking plug just there. Do you reckon I can open this and service it in some way? Or do you think there'd be dragons and that's a foolish thing to do which will inevitably cripple the car in quite a catastrophic manner? Or at least cripple this thing in quite a catastrophic manner. Right, so here it is. Oh, I'm gonna get some gloves, that's disgusting. Right, <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty grimy and horrible, so gloves have been acquired. <clears throat> so this, oops, let's take these little pins out. 
This is the cold start regulator. And I'll be honest, I didn't really know what to expect when I took this thing off the car because I'll, I actually thought it was a different part of the uh, fuel system when I was sort of tracing the pipes back. Then I just got looked at the handbook and I looked at, um, I think it's KMI, the company that rebuilds these things for money. Um, this thing looks a little bit rusty around where the fuel goes in and a big bit gunky where everything else touches it. So I'm gonna give it a quick clean up. Um, now you can buy a rebuild kit for one of these for about 35 pounds. It's from a company called Salvox, which is where I got the um, rebuild kit for the fuel distributor as well. So it seems to be pretty decent quality. It's only about, let's say, 35 quid or so. But because I'm impatient and it's Sunday, I've not got one. And oh, I'm just gonna take it apart and see what it looks like inside. Because I'm well, gonna have to at some point, aren't I? Right, so a slurp of tea from the Sheppy FM mug. We won that mug for finding their painted rock on a day out somewhere. And before anyone asks in the comments, I haven't checked the power going to the pins from the, the uh, actuator uh, for the simple reason I don't know what it should be saying. Um, I don't know if it should be on all the time, off all the time. So whatever figure I got, it would be pretty useless information. But the chances are this is gunked up on the inside, same as everything else. And so uh, it's not going to be electrical fault, it's going to be a gummed up petrol and withered rubber problem. Yeah, I'm glad I wore gloves now. <laughs> wow, what do you know? These nitrile gloves are not happy in carb cleaner. Who knew? It's dissolving. Wow, that's a astonishingly tight, that is an astonishingly tight screw. Not gonna crush this in the, in the vise, just gonna hold it gently but firmly. Let's see how we get on. Oh my word, that's started to crack a tiny bit. Yeah. The screwdriver is only just small enough to fit into the screw slot and as you put the pressure into it, it starts to jump. There we go. Free. Free to do what we want to do. Right, so this is my first ever look inside the fuel warm-up regulator. So the first thing we've got is this big spring, which sits in there, in the back of this kind of Mexican hat looking thing. It's grease, okay. I believe this is a bimetallic strip which works against this spring and, well now I'm lost really. Unless the bimetallic strip is broken because the wires to it seem to be okay. There must be a valve behind those four screws. I'm loath to take them apart without really knowing what, I might as well. In for a penny as they say, in for a penny. Then we have four screws that hold this little disc which is the back of the fuel valve, I guess. Mm, now I've got a problem, I can't actually get the thing apart again. Oh, I'm gonna snap the screwdriver rather than undo anything for Right, so we've got these four little screws, which with a bit of force do come out in the end. This is a very, very simple unit. So the bimetallic strip, I assume, has to just keep on bending the way that physics determine it has to keep on bending. It can't stop doing that because it's made of two bits of metal and they will forever bend at whatever rate uh, physics demand they bend at. So maybe the valve behind this little disc I'm trying to remove is at fault, who knows? This is, but this is such a simple, simple unit, I don't really see what else could be broken. Now I noted in the rebuild kit, this little foil disc was replaceable. Hmm, okay. Doesn't seem to be a lot more I can do. Okay, so now I've kind of reached a dead end because there's a disc behind there that I can't really do anything about. It doesn't want to come out any further than this. But if I squirt fuel through one of these, does anything come out? That's the question. Oh, it does, yeah, okay. So those are clear, that's interesting. So really all I can do is just clean everything up and put it back together again. That's kind of annoying. It doesn't really want to come apart and I'm not about to start prying it with a sharp object, which is never going to end well, is it? You know when you start a job and think, oh, I really wish I hadn't begun this thing. 
and I'm sure there's a really easy knack for doing this when you've done a couple of hundred of them. It just happens instantly. But as I've never done this, or actually read a book about how you do it, this is proving somewhat troublesome. Okay, one in, one screw in so far. Let's give it a couple of turns and hope for the best. I am continuing to wish I hadn't started this job. Sometimes you look at a job and think, I'm not paying 150 or 200 pounds for that. I can do that myself. You get halfway through and think, oh God, I wish I'd spent 150 quid on that job. Okay, it's coming back together again now. Judging by the length of these screws and the tightness of their threads and how tight they were screwed in to the body of the thing in the first place, I'm imagining there's a lot of pressure goes in the back of this. It would have to remain fuel tight, wouldn't it? Otherwise you're gonna have high pressure petrol exploding into an area where there's an electrified heated element. So kind of like a petrol kettle kind of situation going on. As tight as it's gonna get. Need to put the uh, element back in again. So this little pin goes into the back of the disc here with a little kind of hatty thing upside down in it. And this whole lot just bolts back together again and that was basically a complete waste of time. Well, I'm glad I didn't spend 35 quid on a rebuild kit for that because I'm not sure what I would have achieved by buying it. Well, there's not much more I can do other than just fill it with cleaner. Well, petrol goes through there. That is now conclusive. Well, let's go stick it back on the car. Right, so this position or the location of this thing here on the side of the block. What the hell is that? So its location down here on the side of the block doesn't seem to be in any way significant other than it's just a handy place for it to live. I say handy, handy apart from actually accessing it with tools. No, oh, not another thing vanishing into this mystery void which currently holds Andy's crow foot. Probably my 13 millimeter ratchet spanner and at least one 10 mil socket. Now when this doesn't start, I mean I'd say if, but let's be honest, it's, it's when this doesn't start. I've got two options. First of all, I can send this off to KMI, whatever they're called, and get them to professionally rebuild it and go beyond the mystery of that little metal disc I couldn't remove. Or pull off the uh, fuel regulator, which I don't think is in any way serviceable or openable at all. It looks like a, a sealed metal canister. Either way, it's going to get expensive. So I'm rather hoping that my rather negligible, a negligible amount of twiddling this stuff apart will have done something. What do you guys think? Will this have done anything at all? No, I think we know the answer to that, don't we? I can't help but feel I've been here before, but I'm going to go and turn the key and you're going to watch the engine and see if it starts or not for me. Or not. Reconnect the battery. We'll do that again. So, uh, that was a no then. It smells petrol though. Bother damn and bother and damn. Oh well, I guess I'm gonna be going to look at a new fuel regulator. Yay!